there's some uh, standard inventory transactions now. Uh, inventory, uh, you know, going back to, to lesson one, cheat sheet one, the bottom of the, of the page, we had uh, those, those green diagrams when we say these are, these are uh, uh, standard operating transactions for a merchandising manufacturing company. Okay, merchandise manufacturing company, remember they were one of those, uh, 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 the boxes of buy products or buy raw materials? Okay, that's what we're going to walk through right now, the purchasing of inventory, the purchasing of raw materials. All right, so... Uh, our task, prepare journal entries and a roll forward of inventory for Round Valley as of October 31st. The October 1 inventory general ledger account shows a balance of 20 grand. All right, 20 grand. That's our beginning balance in the T account. Throw that in there. Um, that uh, probably doesn't tie to our uh, lesson four uh, balance sheet, but that's okay. It's a given for this problem. Let's just go forward. Also, this problem you're going to see, you know, uh, this problem you can apply to your homework also. This problem you can apply to your test. Once you understand this concept and how these works, the numbers are interchangeable. It doesn't matter where the number are. You know where to put the number. And then it's just math from there. It's just addition and subtraction. Accounting is easy, remember? All right. Uh, a. So on October 7th, Round Belly purchased 27000 of inventory on account. Credit terms are uh, 210 net 30. We'll get into that in a second. But hey, all right, stop. Remember, accounting is easy. Uh, did a transaction happen? Yeah, goods and services exchange. We received 20, 27000 of inventory, um, and uh, you know, we, we, we owe that. So, yeah, goods and services exchange. Um, so, what accounts? Well, increased asset, right? Debit, uh, debit inventory. Let's go to the A journal. Uh, yeah, so we got the T account. We're going to roll forward. Uh, a right here. Uh, increase... Um, Inventory twenty seven thousand, and over here the journal entry increase uh, inventory twenty seven thousand. All right, we owe these people money for that uh, that inventory. So uh, increased liability, right? Increased liability. Credit accounts payable for twenty seven thousand. That's our journal entry. I'm only going to show you the uh, T account for inventory. We already know T accounts. Lesson two, lesson three, lesson four. We went through T accounts. That's easy. All right. So we only got the inventory T account. Inventory T account is going to help us with the inventory roll forward. Some of the problems in your homework, some of the problems on your exams are going to be preparing inventory roll forward. So I'm going to walk you through that. And once you put the T account together, the inventory roll forward is easy from there. So we're just going to link the two. All right. Uh, credit in terms are 210 net 30. What does that mean? All right. Up here in the note, standard terms for most companies are 210 net 30. This means a 2% discount if the invoice is paid within 10 days. Otherwise, the whole amount is due within 30 days. All right. I don't even know if those terms still exist. These were problems when I was an accounting major. These problems, these, uh, that, those were the credit terms used in problems probably when your teacher was an accounting major. I, I've never seen a company offer those terms, but uh, oh well. Just just know that 210 net 30, 2% 2 discount if paid within 10 days net, uh, the rest is due within 30. Or, you know, if you don't pay it in 10 days, it's due in 30 days. All right, B, October 7, Round Valley paid $600 cash in transportation charges to get the inventory's place of business. Okay, uh, look at the bottom left of your page. No, inventory costs is to include all those costs necessary to get the inventory to a sellable condition. All right, well, if we need to pay a transportation to get it to us so that we can sell it, well, those are costs to get the inventory to a sellable condition. Put those costs in inventory. Okay, if that's inventory, goods and services exchange, uh, asset goes up, right? We, uh, we paid for the transportation costs. Asset. Inventory, it's going to benefit your future period because we're going to sell that inventory in the future. Debit asset inventory, credit cash. We paid cash. Credit cash. All right. Uh, put that on the roll for that $600 B. That's an increase to our inventory cost. It's a, it's a cost to get the inventory to a sellable condition. All right. Moving on to, uh, to C. On October 9th, Round Belly returned 450 of defective inventory to the seller and received credit on its account. All right, goods and services exchange. We send inventory back. Transaction, yes. All right, what are the accounts? Inventory, yeah. And probably we're going to reduce accounts payable. We don't owe that anymore, right? Okay, let's check out the journal entry. Accounts payable, debit. How do we decrease the liability? We debit it, right? Debit accounts payable. And we're decreasing our inventory. We're sending that inventory back. How do we decrease uh, an asset? Credit, right? Right side. All right, 450, 450. Throw that into our T account right here, 450. C. Moving on to D, on October 16th, Round Valley paid the amount owed on the purchase of October 7th in full. All right, so October 7th we purchased, October 16th we pay it, uh, 210 net 30. Oh, we qualify for the 2% discount because we're paying a ten, in, within 10 days, right? All right, well, let's calculate the, the, the discount, include that in our journal entry, and then include that in our inventory roll for it. All right. You see right here, 210 net 30 calculation, original purchase price, 27 grand, less the return of inventory. Add that inventory back. We don't owe that anymore. All right, then we get a 26,550 times 2%, 531. That's our discount. Subtract that out. Uh, now we got 26,000 uh, 26, 
uh, and nineteen dollars. That's what we owe, right? That's 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 our balance because we're paying ahead of time. We get a discount. All right. So what's the journal entry? All right. Well, uh, we're decreasing liability, right? Because uh, we're. If we're paying it, we're not going to load anymore, right? And we're also uh, decreasing cash because we're paying cash. Okay, so we got accounts payable with cash, but uh, you know the accounts payable was the full amount, the twenty six thousand five hundred fifty, and we're paying less. The cash, we're paying less, right? We're only paying twenty six thousand nineteen for cash, so we got a little difference. What where, where does that difference go? Well, it needs to in decrease the inventory because. Ultimately, our inventory costs less to us, right? Remember the historical cost principle? Well, we need to actually have our inventory at the actual cost. And if we are now paying less, well, then the cost of the inventory is less, so we need to decrease inventory, credit inventory. So we got debit accounts payable, 26550 Credit inventory, 531 The discount, see the discount over here? All right, now cash, 26619 That's how much we pay. Now we're going to prepare an inventory roll for it. It's easy. It's just our T account. All right, inventory balance is October first, two thousand eight, twenty grand. All right, then we add the twenty-seven thousand that we purchased, add the transportation costs, less the discount, less or sorry, less the returns, less the discount. Ending balance forty-six thousand six hundred nineteen, same as the T account. I'm just showing you because your, your 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 professors may ask you to do one or the other, but it's the same thing. It's just different format. Okay, let's move to revenue transactions. Prepare journal entries for the following revenue transactions. On October 18th, Round Belly makes repairs and uh, sells accessories out of inventory that has a cost of fifteen thousand for thirty thousand on account. Credit terms two ten net thirty. See those credit terms are showing up again. All right, what do we do? Okay, goods and services exchange. You know, so this is definitely a transaction. What accounts? Well, okay, uh, I see that we 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 make repairs and sell. So sell. That's this is revenue, right? We're actually delivering something. So we got uh, revenue. How do we increase revenue? Well, we credit revenue, right? And they're going to pay us in the future. Well, we gave them credit terms, so they're not paying us now. They're paying us in the future. Okay, so it's accounts receivable, right? It's an asset. We're going to get that in the future. Debit asset. For the full price, right? We're selling it for 30 grand. They're going to pay us 30 grand, so that's that's the uh, accounts receivable. That's also the revenue. Increase accounts receivable, increase revenue, debit accounts receivable, credit revenue. All right, now the cost of the inventory. We don't have that inventory anymore. We need to reduce that inventory. How do we do that? We credit it. Credit 15000 Remember in A? It said the cost of the inventory is 15000 We credit it. And then we come here, cost of goods sold is the offset, right? That's how much it costs us to sell the inventory. All right, that's that journal entry. I, I got down here the revenue, uh, the roll for the T account for the revenue. Now, getting into B, on October 20th, the customer returned inventory that had a cost of 500 and sells for 1000 The customer was given credit on account. Similar to the inventory transaction, this is the opposite transaction. All right, so what do we got? Yeah, definitely, we received something back. We received inventory back. Oh, we needed debit inventory, right? Because we got the inventory back. Increase asset. Well, when we initially recorded it, we credited it or we debited cost of sales. So let's just reverse it for the 500 So we get debit inventory, credit cost of sales, 500 Sales return allows, well... They don't owe us that money anymore. The full price is a thousand. That's how much we recorded for in accounts receivable. If they don't owe us that anymore in accounts receivable, we need to reduce accounts receivable and debit some sort of contra revenue account. Go back to lesson three. Check out the chart of accounts to see a contra revenue account, sales returns allowances. We debit that. It's more or less decreasing revenue right there. So we debit sales returns allowance a thousand, credit accounts receivable a thousand, debit inventory received it back, credit cost of sales. All right, that's B. C, on October 22nd, the account was paid in full. Remember the 210 net 30 terms? Okay, well, they're paid in time, so they're getting a discount. We received less cash. Look, our cash, we only received 28420 How do you get to that calculation right here, the 210 net 30? They paid us, okay, the original sale was thirty grand, less than 1000 29000 times the discount, 580 All they owe us is 28420 That's how much cash we get, right? Increased cash, debit cash. Uh, accounts receivable. Remember, we had accounts receivable uh, recorded for twenty nine grand. Well, we didn't receive all of that back. We only received twenty eight thousand four hundred twenty. Where, where does where does that the, the the balance go? Where does that debit go? Sales discounts. That's going to be in your chart accounts for lesson three. Also, now, uh, so our net sales or our sales roll forward thousand uh, thirty thousand less thousand uh, less fifty eight gets us to the uh, twenty eight thousand four hundred twenty. There's our T account. Simple is. That's uh, lesson six. I went through this fast. Go back. Remember, all these transactions you're going to see in your homework. The numbers are going to change, but the concept, rewatch this. Use your cheat sheet. You'll be able to do the homework. You'll be able to take the exam. No problem.